In this video, I want to talk about what it takes for a deductive argument to be good. And it's best to start off by saying that the concepts that I'll be covering in this video apply only to deductive arguments. So what I'm going to say is not applicable, for instance, when it comes to induction or other forms of argumentation. With that said, let's dive right in. So the, any good deductive argument, or at least the best deductive arguments, will have two features. The first feature that's worth talking about, and perhaps the most important, is validity. So a deductive argument, ideally, should be valid. Now, you've almost certainly heard people use the term valid before. You might have heard people say things like, your feelings are valid, or, uh, you know, that's a valid point or, you know, anything like that. Uh, but in philosophy, and especially within the confines of a logic classroom, the term valid means something very precise. It's a technical term with a very specific definition. And students actually tend to struggle a bit with the concept of validity. So I'm going to do my best to move forward uh, slowly and methodically so that I can explain this as clearly as possible. And I think the best place to start is with a definition, or actually, I'll be offering you three definitions. All right, so let me write those down and then we'll talk about them. So we'll say that an argument is valid if and only if And here's where we'll run into our three definitions. One, its premises guarantee its conclusion or alternatively, two, if its premises are true, then its conclusion must be true. Or, alternatively, three, it is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. Okay, so why have I given you three definitions? Here's the important thing to note. All three of these definitions capture what validity is. And I oftentimes give my students three definitions because the concept can be tricky. So my advice would be, whichever of these three definitions makes the most sense to you, that's the definition that you should memorize, right? That's the one that you should pay most attention to. Because ultimately, it, it won't make a difference. All three of these mean the same thing. Uh, but sometimes it's easier to think about it one way than it is to think about it another way. The point is, whichever definition you go for, what it takes for an argument to be valid is that the premises, they guarantee the conclusion. The conclusion follows from the premises. Given the premises, the conclusion must be true, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, here's the part that gets really tricky. Validity has nothing to do with whether something actually is true. You'll notice, for instance, that in this, uh, the second definition, right, I use the word if. So validity has something to do with truth, but a valid argument is not one that has any part of it that's true. It, it, that an argument is valid doesn't tell you that its premises are valid, doesn't tell you, or sorry, that its premises are true, doesn't tell you that its conclusion is true. It tells you only that if you start with truth, and that's a big if, right? If you assume that the premises are true, then you are guaranteed to get a conclusion that's true. All of this is to say a valid argument is an argument that has a truth-preserving form, a truth-preserving structure. And to 
get some more insight on the distinction between the content and the form of an argument, I recommend watching my uh, form and content video. Now let's go ahead and consider a couple of examples to drive this point home. So uh, we'll say all dogs are mammals. This is an example that I'll come back to pretty often. All mammals are animals. So all dogs are animals. Okay, so this is an argument that is very clearly valid, right? It wears its validity on its sleeve. You can tell just by looking at it that if the premises are true, so if it's true that all dogs are mammals and it's true that all mammals are animals, then it's just going to follow that all dogs are animals. But now let me give you a trickier example. All triangles are squares. All squares are circles. So all triangles are circles. At first blush, we might be tempted to say that the argument is not valid, but that's just because we know for a fact that triangles, squares, and circles are all different shapes. We need to remember that whether an argument is valid depends only on its form. And notice, both of these arguments have the exact same form. They both say all A are B, all B are C, so all A are C. And notice, if the premises are true, and when we're testing an argument for validity, we must always assume, just for the sake of argument, we must always assume that the premises are true. If the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. If all A are B and all B are C, it must be the case that all A are C. And that's true, and that's the case in both of these arguments, right? So it's really obvious when it comes to dogs and mammals, but notice, playing pretend, if all triangles were squares and if all squares were circles, then it would follow that all triangles would be circles. That's just a formal feature of the argument. It just tells you that this argument preserves truth, that if you put in truth, you will get out truth. It doesn't tell you anything about whether you actually put in truth. And this actually leads me to one of the most important things to know about validity, and that is that validity is cheap. It's very, very easy to make an argument valid. And the mere fact that an argument is valid does not tell you that you have a good argument. However, if an argument is not valid, so if you find an argument where the premises do not guarantee the conclusion, and again, we're assuming that we're talking about a deductive argument, then you have been given no reason at all to believe that argument's conclusion. It doesn't matter how strong the premises are. It doesn't matter how nice the conclusion sounds. If you are dealing with an invalid argument, and in a later video we'll talk about how to establish whether an argument is valid or not, then you have been given no reason at all to buy the conclusion. It's safe to disregard the argument and just pretend you never came across it in the first place. Okay, but I said that merely being valid is not enough, right? And we could see that. We could say that really clearly because this argument is valid, but surely no one should think that it's a good argument, right? So the second feature that any really good argument that any deductive argument that we construct that we want that argument to have is that the premises actually be true. So it's not enough that the argument be valid. We want the premises to also be true. So if you have an argument that has a valid structure, such as this one here, and has all true premises, it really is the case that all dogs are mammals, it really is the case that all mammals are animals, then you are dealing with what's called a sound argument. So soundness is just what you get when you add validity plus all true premises. 
And here's the thing about soundness. So first, if you found a sound argument, so if you found an argument that's valid, you know that its premises guarantee its conclusion, right? So if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. And furthermore, that argument has all true premises. What have we learned? Well, we've learned that the conclusion must be true. So we are rationally compelled to believe the conclusion of any sound argument, no matter how much we don't like the conclusion, right? If we ever take issue with an argument, if we ever see a deductive argument and we don't like its conclusion, we can't just reject the conclusion. We must either show that the argument is not valid or else we have to show that it's got at least one false premise. We have to show that it failed to have one of these two features of really good arguments. And that brings me to my uh, final point about soundness. Finding a genuinely sound argument is rare, right? They're hard to come by. Validity is cheap. It's really easy to find arguments that are valid. We can just make them, right? It, it's very, very cheap to purchase validity. However, for any given argument that isn't quite as simple as the one that I've portrayed here, usually we can find at least one premise that's objectionable, right? Uh, we have reason to believe that maybe one of the premises is suspect. So I don't want you thinking that if you found an argument and you haven't, you know, you don't know for sure whether it's sound, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad argument. Typically the bar is a little bit lower. We want the argument to be valid. That's absolutely required. Any deductive argument to be, have any hope of being good uh, must be valid. And we want the premises to be highly plausible, right? And that's just for argumentation's sake. It, it's, it can be tough to establish with certainty that the premises are all absolutely true. Now, in a deductive formal logic course, validity is the thing that we care about. Because in formal logic, where we're just concerned with the forms of arguments, uh, we're not going to have any content, so we won't be evaluating premises to find out whether they're true or false. Instead, we'll just be looking at argument forms, and we'll be testing to see whether the premises actually guarantee the conclusions. And that's something that I'm going to cover at length. I'm going to provide many, many videos on how it is that we can test arguments for validity, and given that we have a valid argument, how we can prove that it's actually valid using the tools given to us by formal logic. And why is it that we bother doing that? Well, unlike arguments like this one up here, which wear their validity on their sleeves, right? Even, even the one with the triangles and squares, you know, once you get used to it, it's, it's pretty clear that it's a valid argument. Most arguments aren't this simple. Most arguments do not wear their validity on their sleeves. For a lot of arguments, we actually have to use certain tools in order to be able to test whether they really are valid. And a lot of what you'll learn in a formal logic class is to that end, right? It's to discover whether a certain argument, a complicated argument, whether it is valid, whether its premises guarantee its conclusion. So I'll be offering a lot of videos on that, and I will show you meticulously in detail uh, how it is that we can be certain that an argument is or is not valid. So stick around.